Boss tells him to put more fries down, until he breaks. This happened to a friend of mine and someone who I have worked with for over 20 years. Let's call him, Scott. This story always gets a laugh out of our group. Especially since he does voices and acts out what happened. In the late 80s Scott worked at a Burger King while still in high school. For the first few months he always worked the late shift and business was usually slow. The owners were a husband-wife team who as you can imagine came down hard all the time on the kids. Working. For the most part Scott did not have to deal with them outside them parking late at night with binoculars as they spied on the late crew to make sure they did their job. Then summer hit. With summer vacation, Scott was moved to the lunch team. He was not used to how busy it was and was a bit overwhelmed. His main job was on the fryer. He took care of the fries, onion rings, and chicken sandwiches. The lunch crowd was really starting to build up that first day he was on the day crew. And the wife owner walks by Scott, looks over his shoulder, and in a very harsh voice tells him, put down more fries, which Scott does. A few minutes later she walks by again even more agitated and screams, put down more fries, we don't have enough. Scott puts down more. A third time she comes by, and grabs him by the arm and pulls him around. She got right up in his face and said, are you some kind of idiot? I said put more fries down now. Quote. So Scott did the only thing he knew how to do. He filled every fryer with as many fries as would fit and loaded every single row with as many fries as you could possibly put down. Soon the basket that held the finished fries was overflowing because he had so many. Well the boss comes around, raises her hands in the air, and starts screaming, you made a many feeing fries, at which point Scott had enough. He picked up a mustard and ketchup bottle and squeezed them both right into her face and clothes. Yelled, I quit and stormed out of there. He said he was shaking so bad driving home and was worried the police would show up but they never did. I was working my first job. I had been told that if you hear, bus just start dropping fries and chicken. So I was probably about a month into it and heard we got two buses and so I just dropped six baskets of fries a rack of chicken breast and another basket of chicken strips. The whole thing ended up being about four orders, and a lot of bathroom breaks. I did what I was supposed to do, so I didn't get chewed out. But the store manager remarked about how that was the weirdest fucking bus I've ever had. Plus I got a free dinner out of it instead of just counting all that as waste. Scott was lord of the fries. Respect dumbest thing in the world to yell at your staff in that situation. A good kitchen manager does one of two things, you either tell the cook how much you want if you can communicate it and they're smart enough to understand you, or you step right next to them and demonstrate how to do the job yourself, or at least assign someone skilled, experienced to do so. If it's too busy to do that, it's too busy to be getting mad at anyone who isn't willfully fucking up. When things are really off the walls like that it is super easy to see which managers rock and which ones suck because the ones who rock will be right they're doing the most menial, hot, sweaty, time-consuming job that needs doing and isn't getting done. Fries are legit cheap as dirt. It's insane how cheap french fries are. If wasting a bag or two gets you through the brutal rush, you do it with a smile on your face then figure out how to avoid it for next time. The training cost of that employee was probably two or three orders of magnitude higher than the cost of those wasted fries. Idiotic. When I worked at McDonald's I had a similar co-worker do this except without ketchup and mustard. Late night manager was an complete asshole. New hire probably only there a month was getting overwhelmed with the late night rush. 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. As it was like a dinner rush with at best half the staffing. He filled up every fryer then the manger screamed about how there was too many. He didn't show up to his next shift after that I don't blame him either. 
Mustard been something she said. Reminds me of when I played football and we got to go on the road to Las Vegas. We had three buses full of kids and adults and we stopped at a McDonald's. After we got out of the buses but didn't get in yet. This older lady in a MCD uniform yelled out, Show me hands, who is ordering a McNuggets meal? And she wrote on her notepad and asked us to get into one line. Who is ordering a burger meal? And asked us to get into a second line. Everybody else, line up over here, and that was a third line. She then yelled out, Nuggets, follow me, and we followed her to a register that was closed. She went closer to the kitchen and I could kinda hear her tell them instructions. And then she came back to the register and rang us through pretty quickly. As I got close to the front, I could see that a bagged order came to the counter about every 10 to 20 seconds. When I ordered, I basically had my food before the next person finished paying. The biggest delay was at the soda machines. That stop still took about two hours. Everybody seemed to get their orders extremely quickly, and I didn't see how the burger and other lines got handled. But we were done at MCD in about one hour. Why was the stop two hours? Because a group of us went over to Subway. They took forever to get their food. All these years, I thought she was a great restaurant manager and was probably paid very well. Now I'm pretty sure they just paid her $2 over minimum wage. If I know how fast food pay works. Being a former fast food vet I can understand and appreciate what he went through. He made it count when he left. Bravo. She's either very brave or very stupid to think that it's a good idea to put her hands on her. Employee who's working very close to boiling hot fryer oil. Ketchup and mustard would have been the least of her worries with me. I thought this was gonna end with Scott burning the wife with fry grease. Your friend's story really makes me laugh. My first job was also at Burger King however I was lucky to have an awesome boss at a rare company. Owned store. He looked like the person the cartoon character Wimpy was drawn from and so that's what we called him. I started working there when I was 15 so because of my age I wasn't allowed to work in the kitchen with the fryers or the grill. My work mainly involved cleaning tables, emptying trash, and just generally keeping the place clean. My first day on the job an older senior guy the first knew slightly was working in the kitchen loading the burgers onto the grill chain as it was a very busy Saturday lunchtime. He saw me refilling my bottle for cleaning tables at the sink area and called me over to show me something. Something ended up a technique to toss pickle slices so that they stuck to the tile wall behind the large grill apparatus. When Wimpy rounded the corner a minute later senior guy became the soul of innocence and told Wimpy I had been tossing the pickles at the wall even though he told me not to. I was shaking in my shoes I was so scared I was about to get fired from my first job on my first day. Luckily Wimpy just laughed and told him nice try, then made him wash the whole wall. I ended up working there throughout high school and when I was home on holidays from college. Senior guy worked there until he graduated from college, too. Did the same thing at Burger King with the situation ending up with 20 Whopper sandwiches which didn't get sold and I feigned being a newbie, because I was and my senior employee took the responsibility for telling me to do so. I recall as a kid pre-cell phone going on bus trips for elementary school. Bus would stop at Hardee's or someplace and we'd all eat. Unless you were the first few kids. You the line was a glacier. It was only in hindsight that I realized the school must have never called ahead and it was probably a trio of 17-year-olds trying to do orders for 30 to 40 kids. Were the cops gonna show up with a laundry bill? Nice move kid, sounds like she deserved it. LOL! I've been in a similar situation. Also BK as a teen. Boss asked me to cook more burgers cause we had ran out and were busy. 
They go on a conveyor through a broiler. I put a bunch through when stopped. Boss yells for more so I kept piling them in there. There were so many coming out they had to have two people catch them and they were still overwhelmed. That memory always makes me smile. Great example of how a shitty boss can literally make a competent person incapable of being a fucking fry cook. OMFG flashbacks to working at Hungry Jack's Burger King in Australia. I used to work at the same five-star restaurant in the late 80s as well. I lived near one of the country's military academies and we would cringe when the buses full of cadets would pull in. I have never seen anyone eat as much food as these mostly young men ate. It seemed like every single one of them would order at least two of our larger burger selections. You would just stand behind the flame broilers conveyor belt and constantly throw the frozen burgers on until they left. It was complete madness. Good times. Airport McDonald's here. International flights always came in droves. Taking 100 people per register in an hour. So 600 in an hour? I got fry duty once when an international fight arrived. I have no idea how but I managed to make the fryers give me non-stop fries for an hour. Each basket went down 30 seconds after the previous. By the time I dumped one basket out a new overfilled basket went in. I was pushing fries into boxes and salting like crazy. My managers said it was the only time they weren't waiting for fries. But doing it for a whole hour until we cleared hurt my wrist so bad. And the scoop for the fries was for right-handed folks only. So I could not give it a break. I also ended up with tons of first and second degree burns that hour. Stupid heat lamps. It was so hot I was pouring sweat by the time I finished. He should have emptied the salt shaker in the oil before he walked out. Mine was much tinier, but deeply satisfying. In the wine bar I was setting up in the morning, and well ahead of schedule, the bossy manageress came by and instructed me to open three packs of orange juice to be ready. As usual, but I already had. I started to point this out, but she interrupted me with a loud, just do as you're bloody told. Don't answer back, so I did. I reveled in the look on her face a few minutes later. Seeing her silently fume as her cogs ticked. After finding six open juices, three of which would go to waste. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.